Okay, so we are in fact chemists, and being chemists means we have access to some equipment like this, which is a really awesome piece of chemical equipment. And this particular bit was given to us actually by our friend Graham. What it is, is a distillation tube. It's a water distillation tube. Here and here have this glass spiral going through this outer envelope, and we can attach water to one of these, turn it on, and it flows through and flows out the other side. So whatever we're attempting to distill will go through here, get cooled, and drop down. Now you do distillation by basically heating up your liquid. When you heat up your liquid of course it turns into a vapour or a gas and that vapour goes through here then it gets condensed back into a liquid and drops down. What's really cool about liquids is they have specific temperatures at which they'll do that. So if I have a mix of something whether it's water or oils or alcohols and they're all mixed up and I want to separate them out then I can do that by using that specific temperature. So you heat it up to a temperature at which the thing that you're interested in will evaporate. So let's say we have a mixture of water and alcohol. The boiling point of alcohol is much lower than the boiling point of water. So if I heat that up, what's first going to come off is all the alcohol as a vapour or a gas. We put that through here, add the water and that alcohol will recondense and drop out as alcohol with a reasonable amount of purity, leaving the water behind until the temperature goes up. Until the alcohol is boiled off, then the temperature will go up to the water boiling temperature and we'd actually get water coming through there. But we can separate those two liquids using a piece of equipment like that in a process called distillation. So just to recap. Distillation is the separation of liquids because liquids boil at different temperatures. The lower boiling point liquid will come off first, the higher boiling point liquid will come off later. It is also, incidentally, how petrol is uh, separated, rather oil is separated. Because those materials in the oil, whether it's the lighter materials or the heavier materials, boil at different temperatures and they use distillation for the purification of oils into pet uh, petroleum and various oils. Now we can make this equipment really, really easily. The core of it is that coil. Now it's got an envelope around it because we have water cool it, but the coil is long enough and made of a material that can get rid of that heat doesn't have to have a jacket around it, it can just be exposed into the air. And of course this material is awesome for that. It's copper. So I've got here a bit of 8mm microbore pipe. Now microbore is meant for taking turns and radiuses and you can bend this stuff super easily by hand. Once we bend this around a former, that is the core of our distillation equipment. That's what we actually need. Now we connect this to a vessel where we can boil that material in that vessel. The vapour will come up just like it did in the glass, condense in the air because we've got it exposed to the air, and the liquid will drop out. So that's the core of any still, because the distillation gets shortened to still. So now we've got our core. A copper coil which is our core what we need is a vessel that we can seal because it all needs to be sealed otherwise of course the vapor will just escape everywhere with this being a standard fitting we can use some standard copper fittings and uh, something like a pressure cooker so to make our distiller what we've got is the coil that we've made and then a pressure cooker and this is an aluminium pressure cooker you can buy them in aluminium or stainless steel if you're going to do something a bit more caustic use stainless steel and then we've got a couple of fittings right here so that goes on the end of the coil and turns into 15 mil which goes on there that's another 15 mil which goes on there and then we drill out this lid and that tank connector goes on the lid. And I've just dropped the weight. <laughs> anyway, let me drill the lid out. So all I dealt with that was drill it out with a 25 mil hole saw, give it a bit of a freshen up, and then the tank connector went straight in there. That's got a 15 millimeter outlet. So that goes on like that. And then on our coil, we've got a bit of 15 millimeter pipe with a 15 to eight millimeter reducer. And then that goes in like that. <laughs> That is our distillation equipment done. Uh, I mean, it really is quite easy. What we're talking about five minutes or so and the expenditure on this, this and this. Now, obviously that's a bit wobbly as you just saw. There we go. So we need a stand to hold that. So we'll grab a stand in a minute and then we'll finish that little bit just by tightening those nuts up. So there it is, my purely for educational research purposes only still, our distillation equipment. 
So I've got it on this hob here. Now you control this by the heat because you want to boil off the liquid you're interested in. If you do it too vigorously, obviously you're going to get vapour out the other end. So you need to control that heat so that the vapour comes off at a certain rate. If it's coming off too quick, obviously you just get vapour out of your pipe, end of your pipe instead of drips and you're looking for drips. If you're getting vapour, then you need to cool that and you can cool that by dipping it in water, blowing cold air out of it or just simply making it longer. The other easiest thing to do is to turn down the heat. If you turn down the heat, clearly it won't boil as vigorously. So those are your control parameters. And now all we've got to do is put something in there where we want to distill off the, in inverted commas, essential oils. And there it is coming out. That's actually awesome. Okay, so I've changed the angle of this because uh, what happens obviously is when the um, liquid turns, and the gas turns them back into liquid. If the angle is too steep, it's obviously going to pull, and then we'll need pushing against gravity around these coils, which is a bit much. So I put this angle in there so that there would be freer flow of it by the time it got to here and cooling. And we've been running this for about five minutes or so, and we have ourselves some essential oil. And there it is. Oh yeah. <laughs> fantastic. <laughs> of course you can use such equipment to make your own spirits if you want. So you could distill your own proof alcohol. Remember though that is illegal, uh, certainly in Britain and America and Canada. However, you can use it to purify the stuff so that it in fact becomes a biofuel. So it's a very high proof. Now alcohol boils about 73 degrees centigrade, water boils at about 100 degrees centigrade. So if you hold it in that temperature range, what you're going to get off is a very high proof or a very pure alcohol in the sort of like 90, 95% region and that stuff will burn. So here's the stuff that we actually produced. So if I put a little bit in there, Give myself a bit of a spell. And there we go. We now have an alcohol flame. And just to show you the flame, there you go. No worries at all. So we've made ourselves a biofuel and we can use the still to do that. Now we put it on a hob unit and just heated it at atmospheric pressure. So you may think, what's the point? Because uh, you know, we're burning one thing, but we used heat to do it. But we don't have to use that temperature. We used a pressure cooker. So if we reduce the pressure in that pressure cooker, actually it will uh, evaporate at a much lower temperature. And that tends to be what they do, actually. So you can get this stuff to distill at lower temperatures if you do it in a vacuum. If you don't do it in a vacuum, then you need to hold it around about 73 degrees centigrade or so. Somewhere around about there, just lower than 100, and you will be making your own biofuel. Anyway, extremely easy to put together, quite cheap, very easy to use, and a brilliant way of purifying something to get your own biofuel out of it. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching and please remember to like and subscribe.